Let's bring in once again Hillary Mann Leverett from Washington, D.C. She's uh, a professor at American University and a former White House and uh, State Department official. Hillary, uh, pretty uh, pessimistic view we just heard there from Riyadh uh, Mansour. I wonder um, why the U.S. hasn't done more to make uh, a positive change or contribution to the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict. It's not as if it, it hasn't had uh, the time. So much, of course, was, was expected from, from President Obama when, when he w was elected. Why hasn't he, he fulfilled that promise? Well, I think we're, what we see is the end of the road of a peace process of many, many decades. The United States has wanted, has needed a peace process, a so-called peace process between Israelis and Palestinians, between Arabs and Israelis, in order to solidify this pro-American political and security order in the Middle East. Because if, you're, if you have the Israelis and Palestinians constantly fighting and tremendous numbers of Palestinian deaths, it's very difficult for Arab states to align themselves with the United States for various objectives in the Middle East. So that's the rationale the United States has, and it has put out these various goals along the way. We started with autonomy, then legitimate rights of Palestinians, political rights, then self-determination, then two-state solution. And I think what you see happening now, the reason why the United States is now so slow to come to the table to really push for an urgent ceasefire to stop this violence is it has nothing to put on the table. It has gone through all these steps from autonomy to legitimate rights to two-state solution and failed each step along the way. It now doesn't have something to put on the table and therefore it's difficult to negotiate a ceasefire if there's not a common goal that can be reached. So given that, how important are um, regional actors like Egypt uh, and Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. uh, right now? Can we rely perhaps in, in them uh, on them to get involved uh, and, and pursue uh, at least measurable steps towards some sort of conflict resolution. Well, this will be this will be a very important test. I think both Egypt and Saudi Arabia, and I would add Turkey to that list, three critically important American allies have a, have a very significant interest in there being a peace process because it's difficult for those countries, for Turkey, for Egypt, for Saudi Arabia, to align with the United States while Israel is killing Palestinians on a daily basis. That's just very hard to do. So I think this is a critical test for them with the United States as a power in decline, a, pow a, a power that is receding from the Middle East. This is a critical test for them to step up to the plate to see if they can help negotiate a ceasefire, and we'll just have to see whether they're up to the task. Meanwhile, we've got Israeli airstrikes on Gaza, rockets being fired from Gaza into Israel. What needs to happen to de-escalate this crisis? Can it be de-escalated? Well, the Israelis have already declared that this is probably going to be at least a week-long operation. And so if you take the death count from today, which is between 25 and 30 Palestinians uh, killed, and you, fl you take that out for a week, you're talking about hundreds of Palestinians that are likely to be killed. The Israelis seem to be very focused on that course, not only to teach the Palestinians a lesson, but to do what they call mow the lawn, to, to basically cut back Palestinian capabilities to, to, to lob rockets at at Israel. They seem very determined to do that, and without a very high-level urgent U.S. intervention, I think they'll continue to do it.